Katrina, Cheryl, and uh, we have Joyce who will be up on around 6.30 or perhaps a little earlier. Um, but Cheryl, why don't we go ahead, unless there's any public comments. Maybe, maybe, Cheryl. Uh, the Busca property sold by a private sale. Um, we're going to put taxes on that were 85, 38, 32. Um, that included delinquent and current taxes. And $1,270 $1 in attorney fees um, were not paid at the time of the sale, but I believe that they were paid by the new owner today. Um, that was the sale of what, Cheryl? It was sold for the Busca 80. property. That's oh, the one Steve Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit on road grants, the class four grants that you saw mm -hmm. that are going around, we took advantage of last year as well. Uh, we had the Williams Road done last year and another road, I forgot which it was. Uh, no, Lynchia was this year. Uh, $7,143 and Jonesbrook Road $12,000. Mm -hmm. And in progress to do later this year is the Mountain Road and the Common Road. They're in progress now, adding some fill and some stone to line the ditches. Um, dumb question Why are those called Class 4 road grants when those aren't Class 4 roads? Um, well, they tend, the class four roads, they go onto the other roads if there's erosion problems mm -hmm. that are leading into that. Um, <coughs> so they're not specifically okay. class four roads. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're going to see more. Um, if you attend the meeting on uh, Thursday, I think, you'll see more. There's 50 more sites that they're talking about. Some of those are some of these sites that have been fixed already. Um, Harwood Union Unified School District reimbursed the town $2,105 so far from the mowing. Um, they owe us $4,180 for half of the tennis courts, so we'll be receiving that and building for those mm -hmm. today. Um, we have a equipment grant for $5,000 for the two cameras for the dump truck and four new uniforms for the fire department. And I talked with Dick Hosking the other day, um, and he agreed to give us the additional funds needed for doing the repairs that Dubois is doing on Lover's Lane, and he mm -hmm. said Dubois is doing an excellent job. Um, so that's just about done from what I understand. Martin just has to get the state down there and approve to sign off on it, make sure that the fish yeah, yeah. are the guard, okay. The guard will have those well. Yeah, but the road itself, I think, is pretty much done. Yes. Um, Mark Gladden from Gallagher Acres is um, in the process. He called me and he asked me the process for taking <coughs> over Gallagher Acres. <laughs> I told him the process um, was that they had to bring the road up to class three standards. Um, to be approved by the state, I advised him to call Dick Hosking to come down and meet with him and give him an estimate on how many feet of what would be needed, the width, you know, to make sure. that a class three road. So Dick Hosking has been talking with him. Um, it's going to be a lot of money for them if they decide to take that over and do it, but just wanted to give you the heads up that that's a possibility that they'll be asking you to take that over. Yeah, um, question on that. So what is the policy on that? I, I don't think it's a mandate that you have to take that road. Is it? it is not a mandate. It is a mandate that you would have to consider it. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a road policy um, that was adopted in the 1980s or whatever. Um, you could take a look at that. Um, there are requirements <coughs> statutes for laying out the road and what the process is. Uh, the state recommends that um, the road not exceed three rod, three rod wide. Um, basically, the select board has the authority to 
um, make it narrower if you want, or make it wider if you want. But that's the state's recommendation. So I mean, there's hearings. The select board can consider uh, whether that's going to put a burden on the town. You know, we need extra equipment or extra manpower or whatever. So it's quite the process. Um, <coughs> Mr. Blavin has been sent the A76 standards. The, these are the state standards that he'll need to bring that up. Mm -hmm. The code and a copy of the orange book, they call it, from mm -hmm. the state of Vermont, the orange highway book, um, which lists the standards for class three roads. Moortown Heights was the last time anything like that. Yeah. And, and basically, it, you know, it required curving yeah. and everything. It's, it's unreal. And so, and they, and that was back, you're right, that was back in the 80s. Yeah. And the residents just decided there was no way that they could what afford do to do that. <clears throat> what do you think? So what I was just yeah. going to suggest, um, just should they come back or, or, or ask us what we're thinking? Why don't we um, let Martin know that this has been proposed? Yeah, and just okay. Yeah. Uh, and let's ask him for a response to just to us to what he thinks it would take um, for his crew to to take that on. Mm -hmm. So let's just get in front of that so we even have an idea. Because yeah. if these guys, we, we might be able to <clears throat> kill these guys. It's an undue burden, whatever. Oh, really. A quick question on that? Yeah. That 1980s policy, that's a town of Moortown policy, uh -huh. does that give any guidance as to the factors going into the decision? Is that something you can scan and send around? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Isn't there something in the town plan about uh, we're not in, we're not in the Yes. Anymore? Everything that we have says that the town is not in favor of taking on any more roads mm -hmm. that we have. All we can do to... So, I mean, it would be an uphill battle, but. Um, I have a question. At your last meeting, the sure. select board. Go ahead and take it. <laughs> the select board approved an Arabs and omission to the grand list for $100,000 for this property. Um, the tax bill went out to this person for um, their property being in the grand list for 47900 I don't think that's right. I think if, this, if you were asked to approve that $100,000, the value would go from zero to $100,000 because it failed to be in the grand list, that 100000 was added to the grand list. I don't see how anyone can be billed Assessed for forty-seven thousand nine hundred. <clears throat> I think they should be built for a hundred thousand. Otherwise, that's not going to match our grand list. So why would they build forty-seven nine? I have. I don't have any idea, but that could be a question for you, for the listeners. I don't think it's right. Well, it, we need to just ask the question if it's an error or mm -hmm. because it's very clear on you know, the direction. Yes, is. and I believe that in the grand list it should be assessed for 100000 Right. That's what you approved. That is correct. So let's follow up with them and ask them mm -hmm. what, sure. take a why it's not. Yeah. I have my comment on later. <laughs> We are in the process of um, getting a hold from the number for doing the, um, the whole duties by number. Um, right now, that's for John. I pass that to John. That's the lady's name and her phone number that you want to get a hold of for the. Oh, awesome. Right now, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> the Lister's pay has is eighty six hundred and twenty nine dollars. Keep that in mind. Um, compared to what the quote will be for never men, so and there'll be a clear uh, um, uh, proposal or whatever. 
that you sent to Nimrick. Um, do we have a, can we have a copy of that so we know exactly what we do? Um, Sherilyn called them and she asked them for a quote to do all of the Worcester's job. Um, there are only five things by statute that the Worcester's have to do. Um, so <clears throat> when I get that, if I have, if it's not labeled out there for what he's mm -hmm. quoting. Yeah, we'll have to figure yeah. exactly what we're quoting, what we're getting. Yeah. Um, and, but I know certainly one of the things that the listers are required by statute is to sign off on the uh, grand list each year. Mm -hmm. So they would, we would still retain them for those type of duties. Is that how that works or? But well, that's up to you whether you put an article at town meeting to do away the listers and if that passes or not. If that, if it doesn't pass, then that mm -hmm. would be their only duty would be to sign off on the grand list. Or if people might be more comfortable with listers continuing to sign off, Right. Yeah, you can, you can leave it so, as is, right. but yeah. And the um, impetus to this to go out to ask Nimrick because of the recent, um, I don't know, I guess, why is it that we're, we're looking for this? Well, I was asked at the last meeting. Okay, I wasn't here at the last meeting. Yeah, I was asked at the last meeting to get prices. Um, on what Pardon it would me. cost to that's okay. On what it would cost to um, have someone else do the listers' work. All right. All right. <coughs> and that could be some or all. We'll see what sort of detail we get. Yeah. Yep. Actually, I think I maybe we're copying that. Um, this is kind of odd, but the horse farm down on Route 100, old Route 100, um, down in the gully. Um, Martin's ditching down there, and he was going to put the conservation mix in the ditch. And um, the property is owned by um, Mary Lou Duke, Little Duke. Yeah. Um, and her manager, Barbara Ferris, came out and said um, that we, winter rye, rye was um, toxic to the horses. So they asked the town to put down um, the preferred mix that they want. And she went to get that mix, gave Martin three bags of it, um, and wonders if she can get reimbursed from the difference between what it would cost the town to put down the winter rye and what it costs for the grass seed. So what is that? It's about two hundred twenty-five dollars. It's not winter rye anymore, but putting down it's conservation mix. It has some winter rye in it, and Mark yeah. puts in. <clears throat> but there's two puts... different there's two different mixes. One, if the conservation mix that we're putting down is more expensive than a winter rye mix. Yes. So, and if you're comparing prices, you should compare it to the mm -hmm. conservation mix price. I, I did. Okay. Yeah. And then he puts down a little bit of winter rye too because that catches quicker. And it the does. Year it is, does. Yeah. So he and I sat down today and figured it was two hundred and twenty-five dollars difference. If you decide that to pay the value. Like that much. Well, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's oh, seventy-five dollars a bag. It's their, it's their property. So if they choose to have right. better grass, that's their yeah, that's their expense. So we wouldn't pay them difference between them we would pay the price for the conservation mix. That's attractive from what yeah. Right. Right. That's yeah. So my only question is is the mix that we're putting down suitable for use in a ditch? Will it grow quick enough that it'll be stable when where we've used it? Martin put it down, so <laughs> that doesn't answer know. the question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, you, have, you have to ask him. I don't know. So how much um, value does he put towards the seed that we would have used on that spot? Um, this was four bags at six fifty six eighty. So he said the cost difference between what she bought and he bought is seventy five dollars a bag. So it's 164 75 20 for this, less $75, so it's about 85 yeah. 
So how much is ours? 56. 56? No, well, ours is about 85. 85. Yeah. All right. And how many bags do we typically use? Or how much? You use, you use three bags. All right. So $255, right? 225 yeah. was was what he said to pay her if you're going to pay for it. That's what the difference would be. He said the difference between this and what he uses is seventy-five dollars a bag, and he used three bags. Right. Well, we were looking at to what we would actually use yeah. the value that we would put on. Right. Yeah. So, so you know, if we were using three bags and we were paying eighty-five dollars. Well, it was six fifty-six. Yeah, six fifty-six eighty, and then thinking about giving her back two twenty-five, so it would be four something. Yeah, that's not right. No. Yeah. no, just whatever, three, whatever, whatever we would you normally pay, mm -hmm. okay, if, if he bought three bags or were to buy three bags, that's what we would pay them. Yes. So because they bought, they bought, they bought the I whole thing. I understand that. The match. difference okay. is 225 It's not the difference. That's what you're, yeah. The difference between the cost and what we would spend, what she spent compared to what we would spend. No, we're not looking at that show. What we want to do is spend exactly what we would typically spend. And we would buy three bags at $85 a bag. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do the math, but I think I, what was it, 455 or? Yeah. Three times. Yeah. yeah. So he, he used three bags. Mm -hmm. Of her and seed. Of her seed. And her, her seed, <laughs> those bags are the same size as the bags we would buy normally? Yes. Okay. So three times $85. 255 There we go. Yeah. Well, 255 He said 75 so. Right. Well. 10 bucks a bag. Difference, whatever. Well, you told us that he pays $85 a bag, right? I didn't say that. Oh. I said the difference was $75 a bag. Um, if he pays one hundred sixty four twenty a bag, and the difference is seventy five, so whatever uh, the difference between that is, I don't know. so it's seventy five dollars a bag. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, difference. No, 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 no. How much per bag is what Martin usually buys? The conservation. I don't know. Rate? He told me it was seventy five dollars a bag difference. Right. The difference is what she has to pay. We don't care what the difference is. We we just want, so what we'll do is just let him know that we will, and ask him what we pay for a bag seat, and then we will times that by three, and that's what we will uh, give them. So whatever we pay for three bags of seat. And it's going to come out to 225. Right. If that's what it comes out to, that's fine. Okay. But whatever three bags of seat costs. Okay. That's what he said today, so. Then that's good. Are you going right. to pay her for it? I guess that's my point. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we would pay our share. I, I thought she was asking to be reimbursed for the whole, for the difference, which is what, you know, originally that's how it was presented. Well, she paid six ninety six with tax. Yeah. Right. I mean, taxes right. 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 So we're just paying what we, we, would, we would normally pay. pay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> It's in the ditch, and our horses aren't eating in the ditch. Yes. It's kind of a... Winter riot isn't toxic. The it's horses in large... I've never heard that before. <laughs> it's the fungus on it, and it's in large quantities. So they can't be in a pasture of winter rye. But I don't see where winter rye in a ditch. Most times you don't put your horse pens in a ditch. I don't know anything so, about it. I'm yeah. just kind of in the middle here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those. I mean, I'm not going to start arguing about. Yeah. You know, those horses mixing with one dies, and we're liable for. Yeah. For something like that. It's, it's, it's a small that. enough expense. Right. Just, yeah, take care of it. Cheryl. Great, we got. Uh, I think you know, we'll talk later about the uh, Historical Society mm -hmm. Library. That was my... Yeah. Nothing? John? Just the upcoming meetings. 
the stormwater management is uh, Thursday from 1 to 2.30 here. <clears throat> and Cheryl, you uh, forwarded that. Uh, well, actually, did you get the one from Carrie Garvey? You got that, right? Yeah, okay. okay. All right, so we're all, okay. <clears throat> and then, um, Katrina has, before you go any further, Katrina has, if anyone's interested in, in coming to that meeting, yeah. I didn't print all of the sites, but I just print the 46 sites that they're talking about, and I printed the, um, a spreadsheet of those 46 sites, so if you're interested in looking at we have a copy of that for you if you're planning on coming Thursday, so you have something to look at first. This oh, is the, you, you sent me a copy of one of them, yeah. This Why? is the update sheet, this though, that just came to the house oh. for you. So what, is, what is the purpose of the meeting? To prioritize um, the ranking of these sites, to talk about funding, how, and the funding that's going to be coming on these sites. We're going to talk about the parking lot, um, that's currently ranked uh, fourth. So they've already got a rank on them now. That's ranked fourth. Uh, Fletcher Road, the town hall is ranked number one. Um, the town garage is ranked number two um, because of washing the trucks outside. Um, <clears throat> The town sand and salt piles are ranked number three. And the parking lot is ranked number four. And then it goes on to more town mountain road, Culver, Kalaf, uh, the United More Town United Methodist Church, and runoff. Where did those rankings come from? From the environmental assessment done by the biologist mm -hmm. from the state of Vermont and Bear Creek. Mm -hmm. So that's in order of impact, in yes. order of impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is the, is the school running? That's four. That's yeah, that was number four. four. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm um, going to talk about. I see another ERP grant just came out. The erosion grant came out today. So we'll talk about that on Thursday. I just need to know if more of two or more than two of you are coming so I can warn ahead if you are. Mayor John's coming. Yeah, I'll be there. I can make that. No, I will not be here. Yeah, I I'd like to make it. I'm I don't know. I won't know. Well if it's just two, are you going to count? You're working. Thursday. Well there may be three, so we'll warn it just in okay. case. Yeah, we're I can tell. All right, I'll warn it. Yes, yeah, safe and sorry, I may be right. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. No, that's all right. Yeah. Um, no, the only other thing was the meeting next Monday. I'm sorry, but I'm uh, for lunch. Uh, pardon me? On what? The 27th? The tw yeah, a week from tonight, yeah. And you have something? So that's at 6 o'clock. Okay. What's the meeting up there for? So that's the uh, road, uh, class 4 road demonstration workshop. <coughs> It's all the work they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. What time is that? So that's six o'clock. Who else is going to be there? <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I'll probably be there. <laughs> you would have yeah. yeah. I think I should be there. You need to warn that meeting as well. So that's 8 27, 6 p.m. where? At the bottom of Lynch Hill Road, of Jones Brook. It's in the field at the top. On the left, you go just the first top. And that is one of the ones that I mentioned in the TA report that we got $7,100 for grant mm -hmm. doing that work. And that was done because Jonesbrook was done and they didn't want that water coming down and ruining the work that was done on Jonesbrook mm -hmm. Road. 
Actually, I won't be here next Sunday, so I won't be going to that meeting. I'll be on vacation. You already have your vacation. Jason? Back in the morning. All right, so there was um, a couple things. You saw the email from Jonathan Siegel about tomorrow night. Is it, is it tomorrow night? It's a meeting? Yes. Um, I think it's at 6.30 right here. And he's having a guest talking about um, bylaws and subdivision bylaws and such like that. So if anyone can come, um, please do. Um, in addition, I did have, and so I was trying to look at my phone earlier, I had an email from uh, Clayton um, Wetzel, and he had questions about squatters, uh, four-wheelers racing at night, and town rules for four-wheelers. So um, let's just go over briefly. I mean, we, as far as squatters in town, there is no... Uh, I mean, what are our laws? I mean, we don't allow squatting, but I mean, it's that's true. I mean, uh, well, but whose property is it on? I haven't got all the. I haven't got the most squatters, but. Uh, Unless it's Craig's camp. That's the only thing I can think of. But I don't know why they would have talked to Clayton about it. Right. Um, but it's something like that. Where do we hand, would we just hand that over to the state police? Or where does. What's the. I, I, would, on that. I would guess. I mean, if, if it's on his property. Yeah, I don't think it's a town issue. No, it's, it's not a town issue, no. The only question I'd have on that is do <clears throat> any towns have ordinances about squatters? I have no idea. Do other towns? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know because it's usually mm -hmm. the property owners. Right. I know when right. we had squatters right. in our hayfield, they hadn't erected up the corner and put an elaborate setup and it was our problem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you have corn stalks and whatever. But. Mm -hmm. I mean only if it involved the, the town right of way. That would be the only yeah. issue. So or health issue. Or health yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, that's what I thought. I we missed any game the correct phone number the first couple days, so I wasn't able to touch with I just wanted to um, touch with those squatters because I hadn't really we had never touched about squatters in town. Mm -hmm. So to ask. Um, so that's all I have as well. You know, as far as the four wheelers, I mean, he lives live on the class four road, and when we allow four wheelers on class four roads. I don't think there's any time or hour limit that we stop people from going on the class four roads anywhere. So it's not only four wheelers, it's trucks, you know, it's just everything over there that likes to go over that. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's quite a few people, and it's not all young people, it's at our age or older, people get on their bar wheels and ride around. Yeah, the people who are down the road that had all the campers, yeah. they were going all over the place they this weekend. They were all around this weekend, but I know there was a lot of them down there. So our roads are open for ATVs? Mm -hmm. Class four roads. Oh, that's just like a last road, sure. Yeah. And so Jonesbrook is class three, so. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, that was, I guess, my um, confusion. But where Clayton lives is class four. Okay. Good to know. I have seen the state police up and down the road quite a few times. I don't think they really stop the four-wheelers if they're with helmets and, you know, driving reasonably, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like every other place, I mean, there are people that fly by the house, by your white house, you know, no helmets and whatever. Sure. Is there of course, they usually travel on a class three to get to class four. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah. 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 I do it I myself. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is, is there a generally speed limit on class four yeah. roads in more time? All right. If they're not posted, that's 50. If they are posted, it's whatever the town makes them, is 35. All right, well, thanks. Well, let's uh, go ahead and move, um, move ahead. We have, so before Joyce moves up, let's approve the minutes for um, August 6th, 2018. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 
Thank you. Joyce. Thank you. Can I ride with the chair? Absolutely. You can ride right in. Thank you for taking the time to come out tonight. Sure. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I'm just slow. I've been on vacation a bit. <laughs> Good for you, yeah. Um, so you had two specific concerns, so maybe I'll address those first. Um, one was speeding on Route 2 near Gallagher Acres, and I'm familiar with that because I come home every day from work on that route. And secondly, on Route 100B near the Maynard Snack Bar, which someone said is closed. Is it closed? Yeah. Right. It is closed. Yeah, yeah. but okay. it has to do with Jerry Maynard walking across the street to get the mail and so on. So. Right. Uh, Right. And senior citizens in particular, because Correct. of who lives there? Okay. Yes. Okay. So in the meantime, um, between you coming in and now, I've talked to Dick Hoskins about putting up um, signage Oh, the right. snack bar. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to include a traffic study in that to see if it's oh, right. the speed limit. Okay. And they're going to do a traffic study over by Gallagher Acres again, oh, too. Oh, great. I, mean, great. You know, I okay. told them to take into consideration all the homes that are there now when they're mm -hmm. doing their traffic study and the impact. Yes. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So are you happy with that? I mean, as the solution? Are you That's the only solution that, 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 um, that... Well, so I've got six things on my list. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so I brought this up at a TAC meeting and people have lots of ideas. The signage was number one. Number two, to talk to the state police about enforcement. Number three, uh, do, do the folks on 100B near the snack bar need a sidewalk and a crossing lane, actually? No. I don't think so. No, no. No, okay. No. All right. I mean, like in, in Waitsfield, there's there are signs, like pedestrian mm -hmm. signs. Right. You know, so that's what you're thinking. Above and beyond having the crosswalks. So that's all. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay, someone suggested a traffic counter if you want to know uh, how many cars are going by and at what speed. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, and that's what they'll be doing. Oh, that's what they'll be doing. Study, okay. Yeah. And then there's a radar sign that can be solar powered. And, uh, and those we can have for a certain period of time, right? Well, I think you have to pay a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, is it that we have to pay for? I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And then somebody suggested looking at crash data, which is on a website somewhere. I could find if I needed to. But I don't think crash data is the no. problem, right? Yeah. It's just. I think if you're doing that study, I mean, that'll be the, really everything, yeah. everything, no matter what no, comes around to everyone, so we'll do a study. So this is <laughs> kind okay. of the start, I think, to that. Good. Okay. But in the meantime, we can talk to the state police about enforcement. Mm -hmm. Doesn't, um, are you familiar with, with the Waterbury hiring under contract the state police? Mm -hmm. They did. What? Did they do it? I, I believe they did mm -hmm. it. Was in the newspaper. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I, I was, I was in Waterbury Saturday night and I noticed the police presence, the uh -huh. state police presence. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I see them all the time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I definitely, they must have hired them because they hadn't been there before. Right. I knew that they were talking about it to help out. Mm -hmm. Now that they no longer have their own. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so are there other other concerns that I should know about? Or I can talk to you generally about what we've been doing on the tech, which has been more interesting than sometimes lately. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give us a, an idea of what's going on? Sure. So, um, <coughs> Something of interest to me was that Dave Pelletier from AOT came in to talk about their long-range plan, which I thought was pretty pretty interesting because they haven't always taken into account the uh, goal that Vermont has set for itself to get to 90% renewable uh, energy by 2050. And so uh, there are a lot of questions raised about that. And also, they haven't really talked a whole lot about the demographic change that's coming to Vermont, which means a lot more people over 65. Um, and what does that do to transportation? And, uh, yeah. So anyway, there are a bunch of questions about that. Um, we talked to GMT about ridership trends. 
And one of the more interesting topics was that GMT is moving to what they call complementary ADA service. Mm -hmm. So folks with disabilities will be able to call GMT if they live within three quarters of a mile of an established route. And they can request door-to-door uh, -door service provided by volunteers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. Um, so they had tried to just arrange to have a bus deviate from a route up to three quarters of a mile to pick up somebody with disabilities <laughs> from their home. But uh, that was causing delays in, in scheduling and that uh, wasn't working out so well. So now they're going to try this volunteer service. So many eyebrows were raised, <laughs> but we'll see. we'll see what happens. Okay. Do we, we have, have, yeah. do we have any? Routes or any stops in town at all? This it's just out on the. Um, they get off at, at the exit there and pick up. Here in Middlesex, but nothing. To nothing hear. comes down through here except during ski season. Yeah, ski season, ski season right. Right. from Montpelier down. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so who is going to head up or whatever? Um, the volunteers. The volunteers. I mean, who it's is going to? They've had yeah. ads on front porch. Volunteers. Looking for volunteer drivers. Yeah. I hope that works. Yeah, it'd be a great service, but I don't know. Take maybe it will. Maybe it'll go along with the demographics of the older people who are retired and having more time. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> uh, we had an interesting presentation about the Emerald Ash Borer, and of course, it has mm -hmm. been discovered in Vermont now in Orange and the. And more time. Yeah. And in Wartown, too? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wartown, Montpelier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that corner. Ah. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be bad. And you can't inoculate, maybe you know this already. Yeah. You can inoculate trees individually, but it's very expensive to do so. Um, once the ash borer gets into a tree, it's hopeless. The tree's going to die. Uh, something like 1% of trees survive after having been infected. So generally, all the ash trees are going to die. Mm -hmm. Would they give you a timeline on from when it's inf infected to the time that it dies? Is it years? So, or? so it's probably three to five years. Oh, it's quick. And um, yeah, they, mm -hmm. they were really surprised that Vermont had been spared for so long because it, it has been all around, you know, Canada, right. Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New York. So Vermont has been lucky, but now it's here. Vermont has always been known to cut a lot of ash. Huh. Because, I mean, well, now they have to cut it all <laughs> before it's gone. Yeah. So once they take down or destroy a tree, are they gone? Or, I mean, the trees grow back. Um, so the back? tree would be. The next like Rutland's cutting down all the yeah. city trees. Yeah. But I mean, you can't. Something else. Yeah, and, and they're recommending that property owners cut their ash trees down. But I mean, you can't force a property owner to do that. So, at least at this point. Right. Hmm. So the plan is to get rid of all the ash trees in Vermont? No, I. Don't no, no, not necessarily. I mean, that's just Rutland's. That's what they're doing. But and I know Mom Bayer's talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a, a general thing that yeah. Yeah. Of course, Mark was talking ash about trees. cutting all the cutting all the uh, ash trees. Yeah. And I'm sure that the foresters are going along with that because they're not worth anything. They're kind of junk. Right. Like beach. Hmm. Hmm. They're good for fire, but that's about it. They have more value. Baseball bats. Right. <laughs> they actually have less value than a beech tree because the beech tree has beech nuts and it feeds the wildlife. Ash doesn't do anything. Hmm. Well, maybe the state will ask us to hire someone to cut all the beech trees in town, so be careful one me. <laughs> I don't understand what the benefit is. I mean, if all the, if you're going to lose all the ash trees. It's very unsightly to have dead trees and then dangerous, right? Because they're dead and standing. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, uh, we talked about the Winooski Basin Plan, more wastewater runoff problems, da, da, da. so that was, that mm -hmm. was interesting to see.
see how it all ends up in the Winooski, which then feeds into the Yep, and, and finally, I just want to mention that I'm now a member of the Town Plan Subcommittee of the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Nice. Uh, so, I'm in the process of reading the Orange Town Plan, which is in draft form right now, but um, it's pretty interesting, actually, to read. It's also very long. And I was wondering when more towns Town Plan is due for? Just did it. Just did it. Oh, good. Probably okay. another four years. Good, good, good. Okay. I think it was the last speed we had a vote on that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Last year? Yeah. Uh, it was before last, I started. Oh, no. Within the last year and a half or so. Yeah. Uh, good. All right. All right, that's it for me. Okay. Any questions or choice? So, are you involved in the Mad River? Um, the Mad River runoff, based on the Mad River? So, I haven't been involved. Um, should I be involved? <laughs> sounds, well, it sounds like. Um, Bringing up the Winooski, mm -hmm. Jason. So we, we had a presentation by somebody in state government whose job it is to look at the whole Winooski Basin. So we were looking at you know a wide swath of Vermont and then we came out of the valley, I noticed. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I haven't done anything particular on the river. Because um, the plan um, that is being presented involves Route 2 and it involves over the mountain and it involves um, CBRPC. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't know if it doesn't involve TAC then, huh? Well, TAC it is should. informed because all the roads are part of the problem, of course. It should. Yeah. So there's a meeting. Um, the next meeting is here on the 23rd from 1 to 2.30. That's listing the Thursday meeting that you were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if you're if you're interested at all, what just what happens to people who work for these Thursday afternoon one to two thirty meetings? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm on you. That's why the meetings are here because they're here. <laughs> yeah. <also>. Right. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I can't really answer that, but <clears throat> that's okay. something we might want to talk to uh, Pam D'Andrea about. Yeah, I think it would boost participation if you yeah, had would. You yeah, know, yeah. an evening. So not that we'd all jump it and take another evening out, but... Um, yeah, because for the basin meetings, we have them at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Better. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah, very early or very late sometimes. Mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. Especially if you work in Montpelier, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you very you. much for taking the time. Thank you. Tonight in, in the I'll try to come back technique. sooner next time. Sorry. <laughs> very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and just uh, let you know, the next... They call it CWAC is the, the basin. CWAC, okay. Okay. That is on the 19th, yeah, 19th of September. And that's at 4, 4 o'clock, ah. 4 to 6, at Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Ah. Yeah. Which is now in Berlin or something, right? It's in the meetings that moved to Commerce in Berlin. Have you heard this? No. no. Well, maybe you're really asking, but big meetings, any big meeting has moved. Okay, well, these aren't big meetings. Okay, just small. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so that's, let's see. Good, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Joyce. All right, thanks, Joyce. Thank yeah, Mike. And Deborah. Yeah, of course, I was looking at her and going like this. Hey, 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 hey. You can have a bag. I made like 12 loaves. Oh, yeah. I did some. Oh, yeah, I didn't get some. I did 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 some. <laughs> you know, a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you want? Hey, 
Order. All right, so you guys are coming in to talk about some budget, budget overages and then give us a little update on the tax status. Okay, where do you want to start? Uh, why don't we start with the, uh, the budget stuff just so we can get that out of the way. Okay. Um, Mike does the talk. I do the data. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can change that up. It's good you to talk a little bit. Um, you've probably seen the budget. We are over budget a yeah. lot in, the, in our cost, our uh, hourly metrics. Um, uh, it's due to the fact that the tax map project was something that neither of us had ever been involved in before. And when we tried to put the budget together last year for this coming year, we were doing our best guess on how much work that would entail to, to be able to complete the project. And clearly, uh, we underestimated uh, the amount of work that would be involved to make the project complete. Um, I, I don't say that lightly. I, I take our responsibility to be our very seriously, as does Deb. Um, but the work was there and needed to be done. And, Do you think um, it was because of all the um, people coming back and uh, looking to um, grieve their property? Or was that, part of it. that was part of it. Um, you know, in the past, grievance hearings would be a half a day, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. We had six full days of grievance hearings. Seven. Seven, 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 yeah. seven days of grievance hearings. And then in the past, if somebody went to DCA, that might have been one meeting, we've already had two days of some meetings with the DCA. Um, but it was more than that, too. It was um, just an incredible amount of time on the computer with data entry. Deb's our expert on that. So, um, and, and it was really much more than we anticipated. Uh, in order to um, make all the changes on the grand list, you required us to be in two different programs with a dozen different screens in each program and working back and forth. And um, as much as we tried to anticipate being able to do that quickly, it required a lot more time than we yeah. thought about in the beginning when we put the budget together. You know, as, um, as a board, I wasn't here last meeting, but they've discussed it. We've, we've talked about it before, and I've always talked about the, the burdens that are now being placed on listers and all departments in town government because of the maintenance that's coming down. And, and I, I wonder if we have the, um, and an absolute no disrespect at all, but whether we have all it takes to do all these mandates, you know. You know, you're not, a, you guys do a great job, you do a great job, but you're not a professional in appraising properties. Um, doing that little stuff. So uh, we were looking at, does it make sense to have a professional firm do that work that can streamline it um, and use, use and then evaluate what are the listers? I mean, there's certain things within the, the state requires that listers do and we can continue doing those or we can look at switching that around. Personally, I would like to see us keep listers and have functions of listers stay on, but I want to get your opinions of what do you think of the job in the future? Is it something that we should have, you know, lay people like our, yourselves, like me, doing these type of board things, or is it somewhere where we, we kind of move that off to a professional organization? I'm talking again. <laughs> um, I think, I think, you know, you have um, sort of three options moving forward. Uh, there are some towns where listers that are elected and you know, maybe have real estate experience do all the work. Mm -hmm. um, there's other towns where they pushed it all off to professionals to handle all the work. And then there's a situation like our town, which I think is a hybrid between mm -hmm. the two, where, um, you know, Deborah and I do a lot of the administrative work, a lot of the contact with individuals, uh, but we do have a, a professional through Nemrick who comes in and does all the assessments for us. Um, the situation that we went through this past year with the tax maps, I think, is an anomaly. Um, I, I believe that once we 
complete this project, and there's still some more to do, and I can talk about that in a second, but once we complete this project, I think we can get back into the situation that we've had in the past couple of years with our hybrid um, setup, where uh, the professional comes in every time we need to do some sort of a, a new assessment on, on a piece of property, or um, uh, helps us with current use, which is very intricate and involved. Um, but Deborah and I are here weekly to meet and respond, meet with public, respond to the public's emails, take phone calls, that kind of thing. Um, right now, I think that that's what we would recommend continuing. But you're right, Tom, the state is mandating more and more from us, and it requires more and more technical expertise. And I think down the road, you know, unless you can find people who are willing to do the job and dedicate the time and the effort to learning the information that's necessary, you may have to move to a professional situation. Right now, my feeling and belief is that the most economical way to do it is the hybrid situation that we have right now. If you move to hiring a professional, you're going to pay a lot more than what we pay right now for professional services. <coughs> If, and that's if we can kind of take out this year that's kind of gone awry because of what is the, what is the tax map that happens. So I, I, when I started here uh, or in this position on, on the select board, we had had the, the first option, just just the listers right. doing that. Uh, well, we, I mean, we had a, a consultant also. Her name escapes me now. I can't. Charlene. 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 Yeah. She was the she was the secretary for the listers. She well, also worked she, for PBR, but she was just yeah. But I mean, I, I remember I remember some pay, paying some pretty hefty bills. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think anything was getting done, and that's why we um, yeah we ended up changing because it, 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 my my reaction when I came in there was a pile of stuff that hadn't been done uh, and been neglected for a few different years. So we went uh, with Nemrick, and that's kind of when the listers kind of turned over, and it's, it seems to have been working quite smoothly until this tax map issue, which is something we don't do very often. Right? Well, never again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. never again. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the process is to update them yearly, and then we won't have to hire a company to do the whole project. I do think preparing for anticipating having to hire a, a professional to be more involved in the town in the future would be just wise for the select board to look at. I mean, Mike and I are the only listers now. People aren't beating down our door to be listers. Um, there's supposed to be three of us. Uh, so I can certainly see a day when it can be even more challenging. Uh, to find listers, and as it becomes more complex, you know, there's the learning curve mm -hmm. in, in the beginning. So, um, uh, and we're very fortunate to have James, who makes himself available to us whenever we, we need that help. But this year has been a lot, and the state is asking more of the towns, particularly in current use, which is something that um, Mike and I don't really touch. James takes care of that, so I think we can anticipate more need professional services going forward. We should plan for that. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the budget next year would be back to the level it was before this year? Um, well, that, that mm -hmm. kind of gets to the point that I was alluding yeah. to before. We're not completely finished with the tax mm -hmm. map project. Um, and, and the reason that we're not is that I think I explained this last time. Um, you know, the tax map project was a picture in time taken on April mm -hmm. 1st, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, that is complete. Now we're moving to the point where we need to update from April 1st, 2016 until today. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know um, how much time that's going to demand right now. I guess I'm trying to get a, a sense mm -hmm. of that. I'm in communication with CAI. Um, and waiting for a response on the procedures and how we go about doing mm -hmm. that. Part of that, um, process, that process won't really begin until they have completed the digitization of the tax maps, which mm -hmm. they're working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we're kind of in a waiting pattern, and, and mm -hmm. that may spill into next year. Mm -hmm. 
So that effort should be roughly proportional to the number of transactions since April of 16? Yes, but you're asking, I, I, you know, I hesitate to answer wrong because, again, Fair this is enough. a new project, and, and I don't mm -hmm. know exactly, I don't, but yes, I mean. Yeah, we're not trying to box in anywhere, no, just I trying mean, to get an idea. Yeah, no, right. I mean, certainly all the transactions that have occurred since April 1st of 2016 need to be looked at, and the information needs to be passed along to CAI so mm -hmm. they can update the status of the tax maps. Um, some of that may just be as simple as a name change, which mm -hmm. I'm guessing would be pretty quick and pretty easy. Other stuff like subdivisions or um, uh, mm -hmm. dates to the tax maps that we've gone through with new surveys and that kind of stuff, that could require more information. And some of the new deed information that we've been able to get, you know, that may require more for us to touch and handle and pass on. So mm -hmm. until I get a sense from CAA how the process works, um, I, I, I can't give you an estimate right now, but certainly it will be proportional to some extent to the amount of transactions that we mm have. -hmm. Questions on that stuff? Anything at on the tax map status? With regard to, well, I think we've covered it. I mean, we, right. Yeah, yeah we, we're done with the first phase. Right. It is complete. Um, uh, the next project for us is to update from April 1st, 2016. So that's it. Yeah. And then we will move into the situation where yearly we will update and that will be mm -hmm. a much smaller process with just the transactions mm -hmm. from each year. Yeah. Um, so once we get past this next phase of updating for the past two years, then we'll be into a, a normal situation on a yearly basis of updating the tax rates. Um, uh, Is there something with the state? Mm -hmm. Oh, the grant money? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, we've applied for uh, some uh, a grant. The state is offering grant money for towns that are updating tax maps, um, but we missed the boat by being too early for the right. main project. I think I explained this yeah. last time. Um, we are in queue to perhaps get a little bit of help with some of the updating that we're doing right now. I, I really don't see it as much. To be honest with you, I, I suspect it might be as little as a thousand dollars if we were able to get in. I'm not, I'm not saying that's not right. official to the town, but it's not going to cover our, our right. large expense. Right. Right. So we do have one other thing to bring up if you guys, unless yeah. you have more questions. Well, I do have one question. Um, not looking for a long answer, just what's your feeling about the accuracy of the tax maps at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I smile because we always we were through this last time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a never-ending project mm -hmm. to make tax maps as accurate as we can, mm -hmm. but um, I am confident that they're a whole lot better than they were two years ago. Uh, but I am also as equally confident there are still probably things to be fixed in it. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have, what are we looking at, 900 yeah, parcels, um, there's bound to be still some errors and mistakes in there. And, mm -hmm. and, and as I said before, a lot of it has to do with just information surfaces in these kinds of mm -hmm. situations. I mean, we've had people bring surveys out of the woodwork that were mm -hmm. either not on file here or maybe they were on file but we never were able to locate them. So, will continue, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that we have a good handle on the majority of the parsons in town. And um, I can with confidence say that they're a whole lot <coughs> different than I came here a few years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I found that people would be very understanding in terms of like the BCA, we, we really don't haven't had that many. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. So, I agree. So, yeah, so. And people <coughs> have been really, for the most part, very pleasant, cooperative, and understanding. Mm -hmm. I have no beef with the people in Wartown about any of this. It's a big project. It's a big thing that we that we under that we've undertaken here. And having been zoning administrator, I, I really think this is a very good thing for the town going forward. We've really done a good thing for everybody here. 
And I, I think that's the importance of having listers. Um, because, because of the job that you did, you made people feel at ease and they didn't feel as though they had to go to the BCA. Uh, uh, I think it's important having local, yeah. the local touch. And the communication and someone, a face for people to put it on. Because yeah. just like who likes calling anywhere and getting the you know, computer telephone or whatever, you want to talk to someone, you want to see someone. And you don't want that. I mean, our town's small enough that we can still have people come in mm -hmm. and see people. Well, and I also want to give CAI credit too when they're open to take information from people and what I've heard from people who've come in and had contact with them, that they've been very forthcoming. Um, and so mm -hmm. I feel as if we made a good choice. And the fact that the state chose them as one of the vendors too, because now they're demanding it all the time. We end it all the time, so it's just not like this. Yes, we have two things that we could do. Sure. Okay. And then we could add here. Yep. Yes. Um, I have one question for you as well. So. Okay. Well, uh, there's there's already errors and emissions. Yeah. 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 So we have an updated errors and emissions, and one of them is <laughs> the first one that we gave to you last time. So, oh, good. Uh, hopefully that will answer your question, Tom. Yep, yeah, and it does. Good. Um, and then uh, when we were here with you last time, uh, CAI had offered to reduce the price of putting the dimensions on the tax maps. Uh, <clears throat> I know that we didn't make a decision at that point, but they're pushing us pretty hard right now to come up with a decision. Um, they're at the point where they're creating the digital tax maps, and if they don't put the stuff in now, as they explained, it's gone and lost forever. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so what was that going to cost us, Mike? Uh, three thousand. Three? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm I'm still not convinced that's exactly right. I just got a letter out to them. I know that, but I, I it, it, around three thousand could be a little more. Um, they dropped the price from five to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So and just and I know we talked about this, but the reason this is important because it actually puts dimensions on people's. Property so that when you're out there, you can actually kind of walk it, if you will. It's beneficial to anybody who has a question as to what happened with my property. Now they can come in and look at the tax map and go, oh, look, this line is, it says on the tax map it's 600 feet, but I know it's only 500 or something like that. So it, it will help people, first of all, see where their property is. If there's any disputes, uh, they know exactly what we've said compared to what they think, that kind of thing. Um, uh, it also could be beneficial to uh, zoning administrators down the road to know how what dimensions are on different pieces of property when they're looking at developments mm -hmm. moving along. So this work will be done, for, would be done fairly soon, and when, when would we be, be built for it? Yeah, I've asked them to build us next year, and I haven't heard back yet um, on whether that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Unless you've heard something. And then, yeah, I checked it and heard back. Because that was where I was going at it. If we could possibly get it built yeah. next year, we could put it in the budget for yeah. next year. So, I mean, so I'd move that we would go ahead and do it if they can bill it next year. Right. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah. Um, one thing that comes to mind is if we might be in the same situation as, when the t as with the tax maps themselves, where there are will probably be a grant for this purpose in the future, and we'll have already paid for it. Uh, you need a grant for dimensions? Uh, um, it, it hasn't served us well to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we have that option, because if we lose the data now, if we don't do it now, then the, then the data goes yeah. away. Then, if five years down the road the state says, okay, we've got a grant now for dimensions, I can't imagine it'll cover the whole shooting match. Right. You know, it'll be for the whole thing. Just like what yeah. towns are doing have, now for their tax mm -hmm. map updates, I mean, it's not going to cover everything. Yet. I have trouble understanding the idea that the data will actually go away. You know, I. I don't understand how that would really happen. You know, it sounds more like a, a sales thing. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't know, of course. 
Yeah, I don't know if the data will go away, Deborah. I think that they're going to be printing them. And so the opportunity to print that information on the tax maps, once and for all when they're finalized, is probably you have a shot to do, get it done now. <laughs> but it should just be a layer that they could. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I don't know like computers well enough. This sounds like this is your only opportunity by now, and I'm never fond of. Uh, mm -hmm. There may, there may, who knows? There may be some regulation in terms of what information they're allowed to keep. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, that's a possibility too. <coughs> and, and the, the, yeah, and the, you bring up a good point, Jason. That if we knew there was a crystal ball, we knew yeah. there was something yeah. out there. Could be, it could be five years, it could be nothing. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we would like the data, it would be, um, and I think the motion's a good motion, um, and if it can be paid for next year, um, we can do it. Otherwise, you know, the data will have to be lost, but to Jason's point, I'm sure it would be resurrected uh, with a fund sometime <coughs> next year or a couple of years from now, but, um, you know, then it might be more money to do it then as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, an amended motion, which is that we, um, I don't know the wording yet, but that we try to negotiate further on the price because it sounds like it's found money to them and they would probably take any reasonable offer. Well, I think um, we can incorporate that, or I guess my assumption when I'm when he's dealing with Mike, that, that's what they're dealing in the best interest of the town and you're going to... Mm -hmm. Um, try to negotiate and get the best deal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, I just if you, if, you, <laughs> if you trust me, I'm in that process. All right? Exactly. Uh, so basically, our chance of work could not exceed $3,000. If we can do it for less at some point or whatever, but I'm okay with it. Was it 3000 right? Well, I, I know that that's what the minutes said, but I checked my notes, and my notes had a different number. Well, it had 4100 right? Yeah. That was the original. That was the original mm -hmm. price. Uh, they offered the service before at $4,100. Um, okay. Now they're willing to offer the service mm -hmm. for 3000 okay. I thought yeah. it was five down to four. Okay. So. Um, anyway, I... I Ask them to clarify the price and wait for that response. Um, I suggested that we're very tight on the budget this mm -hmm. year and anything they do to help us would be most beneficial mm -hmm. in making this move forward and that we need to budget it for next year. So does, does, might it help if you could show them that the select board limited the maximum amount to say 2400 <laughs> Look, um, I, I should call guys. I, th I think, you know, I think if they're willing to wait until next year, that, that's a, that's pretty big. So, if you want to three nickel, start nickeling and diming, they may say, okay, fine, but pay, pay us now. So, what were you saying, Tom? No, I, I think if they can go to the terms that we, we have in the uh, that we're understanding is from five thousand, whatever it is, forty one hundred to three thousand. You know, I think in being paid next year, I think that's right. reasonable. So right now, the motion is. Did, did we make motion right, for three thousand? No. no, it was no, not. The motion did not. No, no, no. So I will. Um, I will uh, amend. Well, we have Jason's motion that didn't get seconded. Uh, amended, a motion did not get seconded. Um, so at this point, I will withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. And um, I will make a new motion, and that's to move not to exceed uh, $3,000 uh, payable next year after the first of the year, you know, next year um, for the tax amount um, changes. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice have it. All right. All set? Very good. All three. Oh, good. One more. Oh, no, no, that was what we already. Uh, <laughs> but one, so let's just go over these real quick. Okay. Um, first one you're fixing. 
which we're going to bring up tonight, uh, noise property change value to 314, deducted acreage per sale. Yeah, what happened was is when they, they sold some land, and when we adjusted the land on the property, we added it to it instead of subtracting it to it. It was uh, an error on our part. Uh huh. And so I'm assuming, Tim and Mary Larson, you something just the opposite, you added to it. Right. So you. You yeah, put the other one on there too for 47? Yes. Yep. Yeah. That was the first one which we. Yeah. Really yes. All right. Okay. Very, good. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Is there going to be more for Jonathan Larson coming down through for 6.8 acres that was missed? That uh, was, wasn't that Mary and Tim Larson? Maybe. Yeah, three Maybe. acres, the last one. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, so. <clears throat> Thanks. Deborah, have a nice day. Thank you very much, guys. All right, we have uh, old business. And we have the um, historical society. Yep. Yeah, don't trip on anything here. Anybody doing tonight? Yeah. Doing well. How about you? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Uh, and Ray. That's the Ray. 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 So I met with the Historical Society uh, before the meeting tonight, and I did ask them to join us if they wanted to. Uh, and we went over several things, and I will uh, present what we talked about. And um, I guess the first thing we want to make clear is that the you know the historical side we're not a, a bunch of naysayers but we're very concerned that the town hall is not the right place for the library uh, uh, because we just haven't seen the evidence that it can be maintained as a community center like for parties, weddings, dances. It's we just feel it's going to lose that. It may not lose it immediately, but at some point, even with uh, if it's mobile, whatever, that they're going to get tired of moving their stuff on waste, particularly if they have a lot of events set up for like a month and then if people want to have a, uh, a reception, whatever, that it's going to be very difficult to maintain that. Uh, and that in lieu of that, you know, the historical society would rather see the town promote promote the town hall more, more uh, if I'm not hiring a professional to do the work uh, as far as getting it, trying to line up <coughs> events for it, you know, uh, to go down that route. Uh, um, and, and it doesn't mean like, okay, we're just saying no, it's just that, that we have not seen any evidence mm -hmm. To that effect, that, that that's the road that, that we're going down. And I think when we first started this, this was I think expressed by the select board that we wanted to maintain that community as part of the town hall. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are the other alternatives? Is is moving the library building to a? I've heard that there's a vacant lot, Kingsbury lot. Um, is that an option or? What happens if the, if the library uh, doesn't sell uh, and does become a vacant building? Uh, you know, there are things like that that we question. Um, and as far as the historical society moving into the current library, it doesn't, it's like apples and oranges. It doesn't meet the community, it doesn't do anything for the community part of the, uh, the, the uh, our concerns. So, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we don't want to come off as the bad guys. We, you know, we just want what is best for the community. And we have been talking that um, the the library now uses the town hall for a lot of its programs right. and a lot of its um, children's activities, and uh, they can still continue to do that and still keep their collection at the library. I mean, it, they can 
still have all of their activities at the town hall, but not move all of their collection into the town hall. I'm just, I'm, I'm afraid that we are going to lose that building as a community center where you can have, um, mm -hmm. you know, weddings or parties or dances or whatever. And I'm afraid that if the library does move in there, we're going to lose that capability. So you, did you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree that we're kind of, we, yeah. we uh, had the same issues, you know, with it. We lose on the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. And so the historical society you guys met before this meeting, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. How many people were there? Uh, uh, four <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I certainly appreciate the concerns personally in mind. I, I haven't seen I haven't seen enough to to get as far to get where you guys are as far as making those decisions that I've you know, it's not gonna be suitable for this or that. Um, right now I've just I just recently saw the survey that was that was put out. So I don't it's it's hard to say things aren't gonna be available or used in one way or another because there haven't been any plans made or even real concrete issues. I think there's still a lot of information gathering going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and you guys have come a couple different times and expressed concern with um, having public functions there. And I think that's certainly loud and clear. And I think everyone sitting around this board feels the same way. Mm -hmm. um, but I would certainly like to, you know, before making any decisions, I'd like to get some more information. Yeah. You know, we haven't heard, you know, how this survey comes out, they're surveying the town. What are the kind of ideas that they, uh, that's out there? Um, and the idea, and it, and it started here around this table and it went to the, um, the library. It, it was not about being exclusive, it was more inclusive and in, in to create something in town. It's not to um, push people out. I mean, when's the last event we had there? We had one, maybe one event a year, two events a year. I mean, we can say we've done this or could do that. We haven't. I've been in this um, seat for six years. We've probably done a total of a dozen events there. The building sits there doing nothing. This is why we want an event coordinator. Right. And we think that's the necessary, or really the necessary thing who would de would make sure that it's used and uh, you, as for the cost one way or the other an event co coordinator would get a percentage of what she you know what what she brought in or he brought in so it isn't as if it would be costing the town to have an event coordinator and if the, and if the event coordinator wants to make any money, they're going to have to. So you know someone that's willing to work on commission I, I, to do this? I don't, I know that, I don't know anybody now, but I know when the Bundy Center for the Arts did it, that we had somebody there that was doing it, but I doubt if the same, I don't even know whether the same person is around. But that's how it works, otherwise the buildings stay empty. Now the library, if it's the library, of course it's gonna be used six days a week, but the electric bill is going to be off, and the heating fuel bill is going to be off the ball because they don't keep it at 50, 60 degrees in the library. They keep it between, well, 75 and 80, I would say, when I go in there, it's hot. And to make the, the town hall hot seven to six days a week is going to really do in the utilities, and so I'm thinking of it too as a taxpayer, and I know what the air conditioning happened in my house with the, this heat wave, and that's, my, that's nothing like the town mm. hall. Yeah. And so it wouldn't save the town any money by doing it, it would cost them more. Mm. Because they still have to have something going on, you can't just let the the building there at the, at the library just remain unheated and 
totally right. unheated. You just put it back to the fifth year, what, 45 or whatever. But uh, there's a big difference between heating one and heating the other. Yeah, we heated that a couple of years ago. We had someone in there that we used it uh, um, all winter. Remember when we had the students? Yes, the hardware The hardware students. The hardware students. Yeah. So, yes, we kind of have a history now of what that is. Kelly, John, any questions here? Um, no, I think you've raised good points, and we don't know any of the answers yet. <laughs> so. Can I say one thing? I've worked for an event company before, and I don't know any event coordinators that work for commission. They just say they won't do it now. That's a, it's a lot of work to do for a commission, especially on a building that has no rental history. Yeah. I, I've been employed as an event coordinator, and I wouldn't do it in commission. But what about the idea of a low salary and then a profit from the... Well, that's different if you yeah. have a salary, and, like a car salesman has a salary, and then you get money when you do it. But I, that's different. Than I, I think there's a lot we could do that we're not doing now, and that's a valid point. Yeah. So. Well, no, I totally agree. <laughs> and then there are, there are a lot of, there are events at the town hall mm -hmm. that you're not getting any income off of. And maybe there should be a, a fee for everybody that has an event there, even if it's a even lower it's rate. A, even if it's a you know, nominal fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. be, but there has been activity there because the lights are on and, that's, and you hear noise coming out of it. So there's something. It isn't as if there are only mm -hmm. one or two things. You're thinking, you're talking about the big paying ones, not all the other stuff. We don't have any big paying ones. Well, <laughs> by big paying, I mean, <laughs> the, I should say, the paying ones. <laughs> yeah. I just had a thought. It may not be a good thought, but I'll throw it out there and see what people think. Um, are there any local businesses we could invite to do like a one-day pop-up? Um, familiar with pop-up stores in general? If we, if we made specific invitations to various semi-local retailers to say, why don't you show up in more town on this Saturday in September and we'll publicize it as much as we can to and see yeah, if we get the I mean, it just So are you um, trying to get this event coordinator job? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I'm afraid that my time is spoken for. Well, that's, 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 that's what the whole issue is, right? I mean, Want to see the town hall used, but my, and, you know, myself included. Uh, we never die, never have the time when you work five, six days a week. You know, hey, you can't promote that. And do. I think there were, at one time, way back, there was somebody that would come and and sweat, sell all kinds of stuff from there. I bought a uh, electric knife. <laughs> And I haven't seen it in years. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it. But yeah. businesses would could use it. That would be an excellent uh, idea. Yeah, they used to have the, the tool. Yeah, it was tools. Yeah. And yeah. it had yeah. come yeah. out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right, right. yeah. Or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But so, you know, so, uh, today, you know, the last dance we had was very poorly attended. You know? it, it, we thought it was a great thing. And nobody shows up even. I remember we, uh, you know, was it the no hat one or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And it was, went there and, yeah, just pointing. No one, no one gets out. So um, has anyone taken the survey? I have taken it. So I've taken it. You, did you ladies take the survey at all? We have, I have one. I have not filled it out yet. But. So I, I would I encourage everyone to, to take mm -hmm. the survey. And that's the point is to and encourage your friends to take this and get information that's we'd like to hear from everybody uh, and we've talked about it before what the process would be uh, so and that hasn't changed I mean there's going to be dialogue there'll be information and, and it'll be a town decision that that makes it if it gets that far if it gets to you know who knows what happens between now and then uh, but you know it's not happening today so you don't have to worry about that <laughs> but we certainly know that you're concerned and we take those concerns seriously we are concerned all right okay. well thank you
Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good night, Denise. Good night, Good night. Good night Denise. So we have new business, and we also have JB in the house. So I'm. JB. JB. Has to be good tonight. Instead of the four we said, the agenda was already made up, so we're not going to stop an employee from coming in, you know? Um, if you feel more comfortable, you could ask to go to deliberation. You want this uh, person up then? Yes. All right, so why don't you go ahead and yeah. move. Um, <coughs> to go into executive session to discuss uh, a uh, employee request. Labor relations. Should I brought that up? I won't be here the next meeting in September. So um, are, you, are you started, Bill? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure she has. So we're, we'll be taking no uh, we will take an action out of the uh, uh, executive session. We will uh, plan an hour at our next meeting to look at uh, employee, um, the zoning administrative job, and assistant zoning administrative job uh, descriptions in the next uh, meeting for one hour. And between now and then, if everyone again can take some time to, to put some ideas together. And, and Cheryl, I don't know if you heard her, she won't be here for that meeting. Are we talking about the 17th? Oh, oh the 17th? Oh. Were we? Or no? There Did you say the next meeting? I said the next meeting. I'm sorry. Okay, I've heard this So the fourth. And that's, that's all right, because again, the board, we can do our discussions. Yeah. We don't have to. Mm -hmm. And then the next meeting, get back with you guys or whatever. We may have questions. Is there any other new business? I actually had one thing to relay you guys was okay. I had a parent ask me about having a birthday party on the rec field, and I don't believe there's any protocol for that. Uh, is, are they a town resident? Yes. Yeah. It's the um, noise family. Are there any activities scheduled? Uh, it's the day after Morefest, so that's why they asked me. Um, and they're actually letting us use tents for Morefest, so they're like, oh, we'll just leave, leave our tents up. I told her she needed to check with the elementary school to make sure they didn't have anything, and that I would ask if there was anything they had to do with the town. Um, is this a child's party? Yes, yeah, it's a kid's party. He's a preschooler. <laughs> <laughs> If it, I don't know. I don't think there's any policy against it. There, there isn't, yeah. and the rec doesn't schedule anything. The rec department or anything doesn't schedule stuff. So it's kind of just first have parties out here under this yeah. gazebo and playing out there. I don't know. So I just yeah. So as did you run it by the rec committee or anything like that? Yeah, Dwayne said they don't have any yeah, policy. So all right. Sounds yeah. yeah, like a recall sack. So the, tent? the noise. Who owns the tent? Oh, yeah. They have a couple of tents. Yeah, we're <laughs> So, speaking of Morefest, yes. um, I had a request from Michelle for people to judge pie. Mm -hmm. Or pie, so I definitely said John Wood and you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the 15th, and the judging will be at um, between 5 30 and 6. Okay. I just never had a bad piece of pie. I don't know how. I said there's Michelle's doing it different. She's gonna it's going to be a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a little, a little bit, bit different, different this time. Yeah. And I think John has been actually tapped to pick like the um, the best pies the best. or something like that. Or oh, I just I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So you don't know that. But, um, yeah. So John, you'll be like two judges. You're going to judge with everyone else, and then you're going to have. 
some special um, wand and you get to pick the best one. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason. So you, you, you said around 530? Between 530 and 6. Yeah. Yeah. And so I will join you guys in doing that. Um, <clears throat> no, I think so. Okay. So I think that was uh, Stefan on the mowing. Anything on on that to talk about? He's hitting the fence, apparently. Right. Um, I don't know if it's fixed yet. I forgot to ask Martin this morning, but. Does Martin know that Stefan's hitting the fence? Yes, I emailed him. All right. Um, one other thing I, I just want to bring up, I know that there was an email out, everyone saw the resignation by Peter. Yeah, that's really too bad. Yeah, um, although I don't know, maybe he's going to be an advocate on, he feels like he can do more and not on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, sounds like um, a real... Uh, I don't know what to say, but anyway, so I'm not going to. Too. So if there's no other new business, let's take a look at what we got here. Take some more. You have one here. You have to pick someone. BLCT business meeting. Do you Already? think we should yeah. ask? Oh, more fast food vendors are going to have any interest in John. Oh, good. This is all for the this year's. We have only two food vendors, and they're very small. Two. Yeah. Oh, two. It's a very busy weekend. Okay. So we're going to move uh, to have John be our delegate at the Double Tree in South Burlington for the VLCT annual business meeting. Oh, uh, ready? And it's Friday, September 21st at 28. Uh, well, that's, that's, you need to complete it. Yeah. But the actual thing is October 3rd. Okay. Yeah. October 3rd. Yep. Uh, Cheryl and I are going to. I would, uh, all in favor, would I? Hi. Uh, uh, thank you, John. Okay. And you and Cheryl? Cheryl and I are going. letters that you spoke about last time yep and I need some input from you okay I have most of it filled out but do you want to um, send that out or do yeah you... I'll send you an email of what I have and what I need okay help filling it I was thinking that I was walking up tonight and then I was thinking that you guys may have done it last meeting so I didn't no August 31st okay. will have to be sent in well let's cook a sec Jason Stuff I sample? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's <clears throat> really outstanding. You get half that money back for the tennis court repair? Yes. Paving the fairground, fairground road apron. Mm -hmm. did we... How much is that? Oh, was... And when did we, did we talk about that at all? No. No. Who, who, who did it? Martin. Martin hired it down when they were doing the other stuff. And we have the money to pay for that? What account number is on there, Tom? What's that? On the bill. Oh, that was three, four hundred. It's uh, check number, or purchase number, invoice number. 
Sand. We spent fifty-one thousand oh seven. We budgeted fifty-seven five hundred. So there's six thousand left for sand. What about the bottom line overall? Where is that budget? Bottom line overall. Just the, uh -huh. the, the, the the equipment's over too, right? The equipment is over too. Yes. The highway total. The highway is, total. Yeah. They're already at eighty-two percent of their budget. They used eighty-two percent. That's just the. Does that include the uh, payroll or is that everything? Just, everything. Labor, everything. So Their labor is actually really it's lower than normal. But if we are already done eighty two percent, the rest of the year will wipe that. Right. The rest of that. We've got twenty five percent of the payroll have to be. Mm -hmm. Anyways. And we're only at eighteen percent of the budget. Well, they're not. They're right in line with their payroll where they should be. The payroll's like sixty-two percent. Yeah. No, yeah. we're good there, yeah. but we're just yeah, the whole budget. It's gonna catch up. Yeah. So yeah. It'll, <laughs> yeah. It'll get, you know, in October, that number will go sideways. Um, all right, we need to um, make sure that we. You're talking to to Martin, Ray. I do. I know you do. But yeah. <laughs> make sure you guys talk. I'm surprised I didn't hear about the. Uh, I'm not looking to ask every decision that he makes, but you know, that's one you know, that's a little bit um, you know, stands out. Yeah, we don't, mm -hmm. don't pay for something. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah. That's something to remember when we have our town administrator job description discussion. Do note it. Note it <laughs> But yeah, those are the type of things. Mm -hmm. Talk with them both about that. 
And so that's one of the reasons why we combined the, the sidewalk grant and the catch basin grant yeah. is all one grant now. We just have to keep the expenses different. We don't have to keep the revenue different, but we have to keep the expenses right. different. Which is not unusual. So once these guys get um, this, these new people to sign off, then what are we looking as far as getting, getting the bids out? The RP at that yeah, point. We're that, we're that close with the design people now. <clears throat> Good. Well. Doug Hansen has been working with them, and it's 99% done to get the bids out. Dick Hosking said, get the bids out this year anyway. People are hungry in the spring. Mm -hmm. If they you know if they can line up the work, he said actually it's going to be a pretty good time to get the bids out. Yep, that could work. All right, well. That would be nice. Anything else from anybody? Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>